Hey, how's it going everybody? It's me, Soul Supreme, and welcome back to the Victoria 2 Rise of Mother Russia campaign. And where we last left off, we won the war against France and Great Britain. And as you can see, they are... Well, Great Britain is a definite shadow of his former self. We pretty much broke up the United Kingdom, and now... Well, technically they can be called the United Kingdom because they are still connected to Wales, so we got that. But, uh, France lost the provinces down here, which we returned to Catalonia. And also, they lost some territories. British lost some of their territories. They lost their South American holdings down here in Guyana, which got returned to Brazil. But, you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Let's see, how is our sphere looking right now? Trying to see if we can snag up South Africa into our sphere, but I believe uh, Netherlands may get there first. Speaking of that, let me also discredit them down here in Persia. All right, this is looking just about right. All right. Just going through some options right now. Definitely need to raise our relations with them. Can probably lower the priority on South Africa. Yeah, we don't have to worry about South Africa right now. Just on pause the game. So, as you guys can probably see, we are nearing the end of the game. We have well. Within a few more days, I believe, like about five or four more years left. And we are <laughs> we are such a dominant power that nothing at this point will be able to defeat us, really. Like, let's take a look at our score. Okay, America caught up very quickly on industrial score. But even then, we still have nearly double the amount of industry that the United States does. They also caught up in military score. Yeah, most of these other nations like US, Japan, and China, they caught up in military score. Well, you can see like over here, this is a good contrast. You have me, like I'm technically, I guess you could say I am both European and Asian and here you have all the European states. So let's look at Italy. Italy has 708 military score and they are our allies. France, their military has just been eradicated. So has Great Britain. That's why their scores are at zero and the Netherlands. So yeah, the only two powers in um, Europe right now besides me that has military is the Netherlands and Italy. And my military just vastly outranks them. USA, they haven't been in any conflict really. Um, aside from the one with Mexico, is some of the ones where they intervene in China. They didn't really do too much, but they uh, stayed largely out of conflicts. Japan, Japan and China butt heads like about a couple times, but yeah, we are just dominating the sphere. No one comes close to us in prestige, though, as you can see. So. Right now, we are just sitting back and probably gonna ride the wave for the rest of this game. I don't see too much in the way of anything else happening. We might, just might get one more major conflict, but I highly doubt it. Okay, so we are influencing Catalonia. Alliance offer from blah 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 is somewhere down here. Who? 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 I don't know where I would die. Ah, here you are, right in the middle of this. Uh, I doubt it. Well, as you can see, India, the Indian subcontinent is just down here it's a mess conservatives lost 16 percent of party support damn <laughs> wow i guess because all these reforms we've been passing oh the united states is starting to sphere some stuff down here that's weird but they can 
Do whatever they please. Ottoman Empire entered alliance with Germany. We create a state over here. Sure. I'm surprised it took that long for them to become a state. All right. Peace our relations with Venezuela. There are, they are a satellite, but let's see if we can get them back into our sphere. All right, our units down here finish up their job. And Mexico wants an alliance with me. Why? Uh oh, I don't have the ship selected. Why is that, Mexico? Why do you want an alliance with me? You broke free from the United States sphere. Uh, sure. I mean, I guess. It's been a while, and yeah, you lost both of your countries to the United States. I remember that. Because, well, he didn't lose most. He just lost Chihuahua. Couldn't be happy. Still got these U.S. troops up here. But they're not going to bother us. Our relations with the United States are kind of okay. We'll never be allies because of the uh, Alaskan situation. China down here, I know for a fact we're never going to be allies again. And I still don't understand. Like, they had such a great opportunity to form China, but as usual, they just could not handle it. Now, Zhang Zhang is in the U.S. sphere, and Manchuria is in, it's an ally to Japan, so... China isn't going to really do much. Uh, another unfortunate thing. We lost our... Oh, it's a conflict. Ah, uh, Italy wants Tyrol again. Okay, sure. Uh, you're allied with France. I don't think France. Like France isn't dumb enough to join, I don't think. So let's hop in on here. And... Austria is it what it used to be so we need to sit out pretty much two armies to deal with this actually can we get you guys in on this oh France actually joined in on this are you tisk 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 France 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 uh, let's give some money to Italy so I mean they don't really need it Yeah, they got a truce. So France did honor their call. Kind of stupid for them, but hey. Guys, destroy these units. Yep, Montenegro had military access. You guys can cut through here. Try to finish up this war. Help Italy get back Tyrol. I mean, Austria hungry. <laughs> they are. They lost quite a bit. They're about to lose Tyrol down here. Mm-mm-mm. Italy's smart. They might try to get Istria, but I don't know if they'll have enough war score for that. All right. So, Italy is going to get part of its stuff back. Uh, they won't get Dalmatia back, but they'll get, uh, they could possibly get Istria back. All right, it seems that Austria is going in on the invasion with France. Yep, the communists took over Great Britain again. It's back to being the workers' commonwealth now. <laughs> All right, let's get mass culture and avant-garde. Yep, just handling these Austrian forces. The Russian military is without equal. Looks like we're gonna need some more guard. All 
Oh, wait. Never mind. Most of the guards are on their way over here. Not notice that. All right. You guys go over here and squash these units. Seems that Austria is trying to reinforce their army up here. Even though they have, like, a, just a ca catastrophic amount of penalties. Let's back up our boys. All right, so the digging went down. Yeah, we're mostly just fighting mobilized stuff. Well, this is actually a good standard army, but... You know, we're inflicting a hurt on them. They got a uh, terrain and crossing penalty. And Hungary has a little communist problem. Uh-oh, hope we deal with that. Persia and the Confederation of Senegal. Let's see, Persia handle this. Uh, oh, they only have the Sim Nationalists. They can handle that. And what about Senegal? Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. Looks like they do have an issue. All right, let's send our forces down here. Help out Senegal. Deal with these rebels. All right, so they're reinforcing. They're... The Austrians are trying to win this pissed battle for Vienna, but I mean, what good will it do? Ooh. I was born under Russian rule. All my life I have dressed in Russian clothes, been taught and spoken the language of Russia. It should not surprise anyone that I'm willing to die for my country. A tradition of support for Russia and Russian rule has taken hold in one of our colonies, and several natives have expressed support for ideas that have floated around about the colonial office. Sometimes, of setting up native military regiments to help maintain order in our colonies. So that was Bengal. Oh, so this is taking place in Bengal. Can I move this? What's the... Uh, got... Well, we do got some militancy. That's not too bad. Uh oh, June 3rd, 1960. Uh, yeah, let's just do that. For the prestige and all that other good stuff. Also expand the forts over here. Oh, this is ours? Oh, I had no idea. I thought this was like Portugal for some reason. Still expand the force in Hokkaido. Even though I think that's gonna be safe. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I I highly doubt the United States will try to make a move by like invading us. They they know if they try that, I could easily just gather a whole bunch of men together and start an invasion of the United States. It'll be a big war. It'll be a bloody war. It'll be a huge war. Like, but I just know the Russian people will come out on top as usual. See, we stared our nation into greatness. Nobody could challenge our supremacy. We have the highest, like, pretty much one of the highest literacy rates in the world. We're the industrial, military, and, like, the most famous great power. It's like, they got some anarcho-liberals. Looks like the anarcho-liberals may take over. But right now, most of our forces are kind of troubled. We're still in this pitched battle. Let's actually send these guys over just for some extra support because they did pile up on him, these guys. We are just inflicting the casualties on them because of our artillery. Yeah, they basically are about to lose all their artillery support. They only got 10 artillery left. Now they got all infantry is just stacked up right here. And they're feeling the hurt. Yep. Reinforcements came just in time. Just look at this. This is like, let's see, three, six, and possibly seven. It's either six or seven uh, Austro Hungarian armies fighting, like, just about three Russian armies. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, three. So I'll suggest this is seven of their armies fighting three of ours. And we're just inflicting just. Uh, ungodly amount of casualties on them. 
Oh well, that just means less Austrian uh, men coming to fight. Yep, Hungary is dealing with their rebel problem. They're just going around squashing them. Yep, good job, Hungary. I guess you guys could head back. We don't need this many units. What's going on over here? One of our colonies is reporting astounding successes in the development of local commercial ventures and businesses to the colonial office. Do, 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 do. The primary reason seems to be an ambitious land reform undertaken in tandem with Russian capitalists and industrialists. The colony is reportedly becoming more attractive to immigrants and the reports reflect well on our industries. Uh, yeah, fantastic news. All right, the NFL. All right, I mean, this is all France can muster up right now. This war is suddenly over. I mean, if I won, I could probably see if I could get Italy to take French Provence. Let's try that. I want to see. Let's just keep this war going for a little bit. Um, yeah, since so this campaign is winding down, uh, I do have plans on doing another campaign on Victoria 2. That, or I might try to do a uh, Stellaris multiplayer campaign. Or even uh, try to do a campaign in uh, what's that game? Thinking of the game name, Crusader Kings. Though I have really no idea what the hell I will be doing in Crusader Kings, cause like I only have limited, 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 limited experience with that game. But from the experience I did have, it was pretty fun. It's just that it's like I don't know. It's weird. Like when I first started playing Paradox games. Uh, yeah, just give them Tyrol. When I first started playing Paradox games, I was told that this, like, Victoria 2 was their hardest game. I tried to play, like, Europa Universalis, got a little bit confused, and, you know, didn't really start a campaign on there. Then I tried Crusader Kings. Crusader Kings was, like, getting punched in the face with a textbook. <laughs> it was like... You have to do this, like all these new uh, terms and like who's related to who and all that whatnot. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like stuff like that, but it was too advanced for me. So then my last fallback was um, Victoria, and I was hearing constantly that Victoria 2 was like the hardest uh, paradox game to get into, but. I had, ironically, two false starts. I had one start, like my first ever time playing this game, I played as Brazil because someone was like, oh, it's easy to learn how to play Brazil. I played that for a minute, uh, lost my army, couldn't recover it, didn't know how, and just gave up on that playthrough. <laughs> then I tried the United States, and same thing happened. I was like, I got into war with Mexico, and then I just, did not know like why my army like my here my soldier support was not like recovering then i stopped i then read something like five minutes after i stopped that said oh what you have to do is go to your population uh click on this and encourage like people to promote to soldiers after like you raise like the military spending and all that so people want to like join you know the army so i was like oh okay that makes sense and lo and behold, you did not. Why'd you revoke military access, you bastard? I need it. Yeah, you guys got this. You're taking back the stuff, heading back over to South America. But yeah, I was like, okay. So once that, like, I figured out, oh, that's how you get soldiers and whatnot. That's when the ball started rolling and everything fell into place. Like, okay. So once I got these guys ready, up and going, the rest was just like, you know, 
Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Uh, let's actually do... Yeah, let's do oil-driven ships. Uh, basically, Navy is our last industry we gotta focus on. Germany is a secondary power, but it looks like they're about to become a great power at Netherlands' expense. Yep, Netherlands, unless they catch up. Oh, no, they just got kicked out. So, Germany is back to being a great power once again. Netherlands lost great power status. And here comes Germany. Germany's gonna try to influence Bohemia Moravia. See if I can put some points in the Venezuela. Actually, can I ally you now? There we go. Can lower the points in Persia because I doubt we're gonna get any issues with Persia. Same thing with Brazil since Netherlands is gone. So, we can start putting it heavily back in our sphere. Try to maintain Bohemia and Moravia. Let's actually discredit Germany here. See if that'll discourage them a little bit. Though I doubt it because they share a border. Yep, still promoting clerks. Let's actually check our factories. What's our unemployment looking like? Okay. This actually isn't too bad. Like factories are being built and the others are being expanded. It seems that we are living it up right now. Man. But yeah, I've had fun during this uh, playthrough. Actually, been very interesting. But if I do play Crusader Kings, which I am kind of leaning towards it, um, let me add this little tidbit. Um, Crusader Kings, I'm only like missing two DLCs from Crusader Kings. That was like the most recent two. The last one I remember purchasing was uh, Reapers Do, I believe. Yeah, that was the last one I can remember purchasing. I haven't purchased the uh, the new one, the Jade Emperor one, and I think there was like one other one. The one that added the uh, secret societies and stuff, I haven't purchased that one either. But I would be interested in playing CK too. Alright, so there we go. Since Germany is back on the rise again, I wonder if they're going to have any aggression. I mean, I want Germany to go to war with France just to punish them. Oh, they chose the, this military, um, this special military uh, thing about. Man. Mm, surprise. Got these French communists down here. Wait a minute. Why is... Oh, Scotland's having a rebel problem, too. Oh, Scotland... The Scottish fascists. Oh, let's see. All right. All right. It looks like Scotland has it under control. India. Yeah, India is pretty much a moot point. Again, we can't do anything because India has no military. And I doubt they'll have one and for the rest of this game. Same thing with Israel. Israel has no military and all I've just been doing is funding their railroads. We've invested nearly 100k in Israel. Let's see. Do they have any military techs yet? No. Not a, they still don't even have naval tech. India, same story. They have no prestige, no industry, and no military power. You know, I could just, if I just release India from my sphere, that would just cause like all these sub states to just start eating into India. That would be weird. <laughs> I don't understand why that occurs though. Like, I, I believe that um, 
it should be kind of like I think I'm thinking of like E4 or Solaris where if you release a state they're at least like caught up in tech with you a little bit or at least um taken part way or what's that thing where they have like a bonus to research rate that the mother country has all right so let's ban you from Bohemian Moravia since you're acting dumb. Yeah, since Netherlands is gone, we don't have any like major pressure on our sphere. Without um Catalonia is not gonna really have much trouble. Looks like they already built up a, a sizable military. Small, like a pretty much a good size for the you know size of their nation. Wow. There goes, oh, here's like the German pan-nationalist. The Austria has this under control. Austro-Hungarian fascist. Oop. And there goes my alarm. So I'm gonna pause the video right here. Oh, actually, let's pass reform. I just noticed we can pass another reform. Voters' rights, secret ballot, universal healthcare movement. Okay, so let's see. Secret ballot. There we go. All right, so I'm going to end this episode off right here. And when we return, we shall... I believe that next episode might be the last episode. Maybe. But I hope you guys like and enjoy the video. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more. And with that said, I hope to see you guys again in the next episode. This is Solar Supreme, and good day, folks. Now this one is pure niceness.